yes, we're starting a brand new series today called Transformed. I'm really excited about this series. Looking forward to everything that the guys are going to, uh, myself, are going to bring out and share with you. Um, but hey, just to introduce it a little bit today, today's purpose of today's message really is just to introduce the topic to you and to explain that God wants to transform you. Uh, recently I was in a DIY shop, there's one round the corner from where I live, where I like to go, I like to keep it local. I was going in, chatting to the guy, asking, have you got this, have you got that? And they'll say, no, sorry, we're completely sold out. So every time we get stuff in, they just go, it's like gold dust. Everybody is trying to transform their garden. Everyone's trying to use this time of lockdown to, to transform their garden or their house or something. And I'm, I'm actually the same. I've been working really hard in our garden. Uh, this is what our garden looked like when we first bought the house a couple of years ago. And this is actually just a section of it. So actually there is other space around the kids to play. So if you like, been a bit complacent, not really touched that bit, but I didn't really want there to be a pond there. I didn't want all those rockery. I want a nice open space for the kids to play. And so I've been working really hard. So 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 I've been I've been smashing that rockery down. I've drained that pond. I've taken the newts and put them in a new pond. I've, I've, I've filled in the pond. I've now started to put soil over it. This is what it looks like now. And so it's already started to, to be transformed. Uh, and actually, I've got this idea in my head of exactly what I want it to look like when it's done. I can't wait for that day. It's going to be party central. Everyone's going to be around. Barbecues, chilling uh, on, on the garden furniture. It's going to be great. Can't wait for it. I've got this vision. Don't know when it'll happen, but we will get there eventually. Because transformation takes time. It takes time. But I've got a clear idea in my head of what I want it to be when it's finished. But you know what? It's taken an incredible amount of effort. I've been in the garden swinging a sledgehammer, swinging a pickaxe, uh, shoveling stuff. I've been, I've been uh, bringing tons of soil through the house because there's no way to go around through the house in wheelbarrows to fill it all in. And it's been absolutely backbreaking work and transformation takes time. Transformation is difficult. And you know what? It's no more, more difficult than, than to actually try and transform a human being. I don't know if I've tried this, but transforming a person Trying to change a person is incredibly difficult, right? Incredibly difficult. Let me tell you, after 16 years of marriage, Leah and I have realised that we can't change each other. Like, we shouldn't even try. You know, we've realised that I can't change Leah. Leah can't change me. Leah's realised that I am not ever going to spend the entire day in pyjamas. I'm just not going to do it. Leah, she would love to spend her time, all of the time, all of the day, wearing pyjamas. But me, I can't stand it. I'm like, as soon as I'm up, I'm dressed, I'm ready, I'm washed, I've had breakfast, I'm ready for the day. But Leah's like, no, 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 no. There's some days we just want to need to just stop and just relax and just wear. And I, I can't relax in pyjamas, I'm sorry. I just can't do it, right? It's never going to happen. For me, pyjamas is what you wear in bed if it's really cold. But otherwise, you just sleep in your underwear. That's all that's I do. Right? Too much information, I know. I mean, but, but you know, I, mean, I bet Andy Parkinson is really glad, glad that I have. I do actually have a pair of pyjamas because when we go to um, at the XL Men's Conference every year, generally speaking, I share with him that the last thing he wants is to see me climbing down from that top bunk wearing just my underwear. So pyjamas have a job. I get that, but I just don't want to live in them all day. And no matter how hard Lee has worked on me and tried to convince me, I just can't bring myself. And equally so, as hard as I have worked on Leah to get out of those pyjamas sometimes and into some clothes for the day, I said to her, love, what happens if someone comes to the house unexpectedly? And he's like, it's not going to happen. I'm like, it happens. And when it happens, I say, Leah, can you get the door? And she's like, no, I can't get the door. I'm sorry, I'm wearing my pyjamas. Can you get the door? I was like, point proven. But the, the point is, is actually there's nothing wrong with either. If you want to have a day pyjamas or, or if you never want to wear pyjamas around the house, you know, in the day, it's absolutely fine. But we have tried to change each other and sh she tried to get me to enjoy pyjamas. I've tried to get her to focus on like, let's get the day going. 
Uh, let's, let's, let's not lounge about in pajamas. And you know what? We just can't seem to change each other. And changing people is pretty much impossible. I've, I've worked with a lot of people, especially young people over the years, and I would say the hardest thing sometimes is to try and help someone to change. But the good news for you this morning is this. Nothing is impossible for God. Not even you. Okay, even the most stubborn, most difficult person to change. Nothing is impossible for God. And God wants to change you. God is God. He's God. He's the creator of the whole universe. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful, all knowing. He's everything that you could possibly want in a God. And he can change us from the inside out. God is in the transformation business. In Genesis 1 verses 2 to 3 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be. He said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be earth and there was earth. Let there be animals and there was animals. Let there be trees and birds and all that stuff. He took six days. He didn't do it in a flash, but he did it in six days, day by day by day by day. But he transformed what was nothing into something that was full of life. And that's what God is all about. He wants to transfer, uh, transform in, from even from nothing into life. Even from, from ha- all the negative things you might think about yourself, God is in the business of transforming people from even from nothing into something that's full of life. Full of life, and there is no strings attached, and there's no hidden costs, just hidden blessings with God. Amen. That's why Jesus changed Peter's name from Simon to Peter. That's why he changed Abraham's name to Abraham. That's why he changed Saul's name to Paul. That's why he changed Jacob's name to Israel. Why? Because he wanted to show us that he's in the business of transforming lives. Of saying, no matter who you are, this is who I say you are. No matter who you've been, no matter what you've done, this is who you are. I'm giving you a new name. I want to transform you from the inside out. The very fact that we as human beings are the only creature on the entire universe that God, when he created us, created us out of the dirt of the ground. It says that, you know, he, he just spoke and there were animals. He spoke and there were trees. He spoke and there was land and the water parted. He spoke and there was light. But when it came to man, he said he took some dirt and he formed it into a human. Why? Because I believe at the very heart of human beings, God is calling us to grow. He's calling us to change. He's calling us to transform ourselves. Always going for more. Always going for better. Better, always developing ourselves into something that is more like Jesus. And he actually tells us, he tells us that we have to do this. In Romans 12 verse 1, you'll know this verse really, really well. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's what we're going to do. That's what we are as Christians. This is a part of us that we're not just born again into salvation and into God's family, but it's day by day by day God is working on our lives and transforming us to become more like him. And we need God for this. We need God for transformation. We can't do it on our own. Henry Ford said this when he designed the first car. He said, if I asked people what they wanted... They would have asked for faster horses. Of course they would, because they couldn't even envision what a car would be like. But Henry Ford, knowing in his mind, having a vision and seeing what could happen, he was able to create the car, the vehicle, the very first one. And everyone else would have seen it and think, what the heck is this? It's nothing like a a, a horse. (laughs) I'm saying for us, we can't even imagine what God wants to do in our lives. We need God and God will take us into places and and, and create in us such life that we can never possibly have dreamed or imagined without his help. We need God if 
we're going to transform. It's like, you know, the big light in the house. Leah hates it when we turn the big light on, she calls it. She wants lamps all over the place, and that's nice mood lighting, and absolutely fine by me. I've got no problem with that. But the moment you turn that big light on, man, everything's exposed. The big light shows all the dog hair on the floor. It shows all the dirt and everything. It shows all the little spillages that have been mopped up. It shows everything, all the mess. And we need God as a top light in our life to show us what needs to change in us to become more Christ-like. You know, we, I was um, once uh, on a bus and I was with, I think it was Luke Goddard, and I think it might have even been in Zambia right there. And he was like looking at me and he was saying, what's that smell? What's that smell? I can't, you know, something smells really bad. And what he didn't know is I'd walked past this young girl on the way in onto the bus and I'd got a whiff and it was her and she didn't know. And she was sat there enjoying the trip and just getting on with life and thinking everything's okay. But everyone around her was going, what's that smell? She didn't even realise, she didn't see it in herself. And we need God to transform us because he can see in us what we can't see in ourselves. We, we even sometimes put things in the way. You know, in, in our last house, we had some uh, builder come out. He did some work on, on, some, on, a, on a little uh, wall that was kind of uh, holding some soil back and some grass on it. And it was like our, our garden kind of went up uh, on, the, uh, on the drive there. And he came and he did some work and he left this like, like a block of wood on the grass. And he said, I'm going to come back and get my stuff. And well, I waited and I waited. And I waited and he never came back to collect his stuff. And, and eventually one day he came back and took it, but he left the wood there. I thought, well, if he's not going to take it, I'm going to take it off the grass. And I took it off the grass and underneath the grass, like the grass had just gone like a funny colour and it hadn't grown. And all around it, the grass had grown up, but that grass hadn't grown. Why? Because there was an obstacle in its way from growing. And that's what happens to us. Obstacles come into our life that stops us from growing. But God can remove those obstacles for us. God wants to transform our lives. Amen. Amen. Right, I've got to keep going. You know, we don't even realise it. And, and sometimes we don't even want to remove those things. You know, I was at a, at a, a local uh, tip, you know, where you go to take your rubbish one time. And there was a sign up on the thing that says, it is prohibited to remove waste from this site. Who in their right mind would be wanting to go to that site and remove waste. <laughs> I'm going there to give it my waste but for some reason someone felt they had to put a sign up to say it is not allowed to remove waste from this site and I think that's sometimes how we can sometimes act. We struggle to remove the waste from our life. We think it's okay. It doesn't need to be moved. It can just stay there but God wants to remove it and transform our lives and you know what? We can say that's great, Jesus, but how do you know how it feels to be transformed? It's hard work. Changing my garden over has been hard work. But you know what? Jesus knows what it's like to be transformed. It says in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 9, says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. It's not talking about money here. It's talking about the fact that Jesus was transformed from his glory in heaven, from being in the presence of God, from having everything he, 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 the best possible way and reducing himself down, transforming himself in a negative sense to become what we needed on earth. So why? So that we can become more like him on earth. Man, aren't you grateful that Jesus came to earth and was transformed into something? He gave up his riches, he took up, took on poverty, so that in our poverty we can take on his riches. Amen. Amen. And the best thing is, it's already started in you. If you've given your life to Jesus, God has already started transforming you. You know, Leah, she transforms every single day. Right at the start of the day, she tra completely transforms herself, and it's simply through having a cup of tea. Having a cup of tea wakes her up, it brings her to life, and all of a sudden, the day is started. But until that cup of tea happens, at the start of the day, she has, she, she's like lethargic, like, I don't want to do anything. 
But as soon as a cup of tea kicks in, as soon as that that uh, that caffeine in the tea kicks in, she's ready to go, uh, raring to go in life. And that's like us. Like Jesus saved us, and when we, when we gave our life to Him and accepted His salvation, that's when it started. We were kickstarted. God began the transformation uh, in our life. Colossians 3 verse 9 to 10 says, Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on a new self um, which is being uh, renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. Ezekiel 11 verses 19 to 20, I will give them an undivided heart, and I will put a new spirit in them. That's the Holy Spirit. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people, and I will be their God. You are God's people. He is your God, and he's put a new spirit in you, and he has taken your old heart out and given you a new heart of flesh, a heart that is ready to receive from God, because God wants to transform your life. It is a brand new life. That God has given you. The old is gone. Romans 6 verse 1 to 4. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have new life. You see, it's completely new life. You might think to yourself, you don't know, Luke, where I've come from or what I've done in my life. But I can tell you this. The moment you gave your life to Jesus, you became a new creation in him. Christ is in you. Okay, you are new. God has given you. He's given you a new heart and a new spirit and a new ability to walk in faith in the goodness of God. A new ability to walk in faith in a righteous way. A new ability to follow after Jesus like you couldn't have done before. That is all yours right now. You are a new creation. You are on a journey and it doesn't take it's not instantaneous. It's not even like, like God has taken me weeks and weeks and weeks to even get as far as it's got. And I've still got a long way to go with it. You are on a journey of transformation. But the good news is, it is from glory to glory to glory. I was out with Kezi on a walk recently. And we were, we were in this big field and there's buttercups all over the place. And she picked one up and she said, Dad, do you know what this can do? And I knew she was going to say, you hold it under your chin and it. And, and it shines on your chin, and uh, supposedly that means you like butter. If it doesn't shine, you don't like butter. But guess what? It always shines, right? <laughs> and uh, but but the idea is that that I said to, I said to her, look, says I get what you're saying, darling. But look, so actually the truth is is that all that's happening there is is that you are it's reflecting the glory of the sun. The sun is shining on that butter club and it is reflecting its glory onto your face, and that's how we are called to live. We're called to reflect the glory of God. We don't We don't know in full, the Bible says. It's just like looking into a mirror. But one day, one day we will know in full. When we're in full knowledge of the glory of God, when we see God face to face, we will understand. But on this earth, we can have a measure of the glory of God in our lives. And day by day by day, going from glory to glory to glory, we can have more and more and more a measure of God's glory in our lives as we're being transformed into the likeness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Amen. Oh, God is in the business of transforming you. And guess what? It's a partnership. It's not just all down to him. You can't sit back and say, hey, God, transform me. We've got a role to play as well. And actually, in the coming weeks, we're going to talk more and more about what we can do to live a transformed life. Um, but I want to just 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 introduce it to you today. That Ephesians 4 verse 22 to 24 says that you were taught with regard, with regard of your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the what the attitude of your minds okay god's not giving us a new mind 
but he's saying here that we need to have the right attitude in our mind so that we can put off our old self. And then in verse 24, to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. John 10, verse 10, one of the best Bible verses in the world. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life. And what? Have life to the full. God wants to give you life to the full today. And it's not going to be just overnight. It's going to be a journey of becoming more and more and more like him. You know, God, he looks at you. It's like a box of celebrations or, or you know, a box of chocolates, you know. And, and you know what? No one likes the fudge. Right? No one likes the fudge. But you know what? You don't throw out the box of chocolates because of the fudge. Right? No. What, what people tend to do, they take out what they don't want and they eat the rest. They get rid of the Snickers or whatever it is, the Milky Way that they don't want, and they stick to the Mars bars, they stick to the Maltesers, they stick to whatever they like. And God, it's like, God, he, he isn't throwing us out because of what's in our life. He wants to transform us. He wants to take out of us the fudge and take out of us the, the Milky Way or whatever it might be that you don't like. Just think of what you don't like. Okay, take it out of us. And, he's, and he wants to rebuild us and transform us into an image that is more like Christ. I want to be more like Christ. Man, you know the day? The other day I, was, I found some of the, the kids' shoes, the boys' shoes. And I couldn't tell which it was. I wanted to call down one of the boys and say, hey, put your shoes away. But I couldn't figure out whose it were. I looked and I thought, wow, Jared and Reuben now, it's just really hard to compare whether or not these are Jared's shoes or Reuben's shoes. Even though there's a couple of years between them and I know they have different size shoes, I couldn't tell by looking at it. Then, then, so I couldn't, I couldn't ask them to pack it away, but later on, they got packed away and I was out in our foyer with all the shoes. I could see them side by side, the one that I saw, and then Reuben's, and I knew right then that they were Jared's shoes, that the Reuben's was, was bigger and I could see it because I could compare the difference. You know what? We're on a journey, and you know what? Tomorrow you will be a little bit more like Christ, and the day after, a little bit more like Christ, and it's going to be discouraging at times. And you're going to think to yourself, Am I really changing? But you know what? When you compare yourself and go back, when I look at who I was, I'm disappointed with myself almost on a daily basis with the way I behave and, and the things that I think and, and all that stuff. And sometimes we can really let ourselves down, we can let our friends and our family down. But man, when I compare myself, to what I used to be when, <laughs> when Jesus first started transforming me. I'm just so grateful that God doesn't give up on me. And God hasn't given up on you. And he wants to transform your life. So don't be discouraged, but keep going. If you're struggling today and you feel like you're failing, I want to tell you the fact that you are struggling proves that you're still fighting. The fact that you are struggling proves that the devil hasn't beaten you. Robert Madu once said, says your destiny is so much greater than your history. We believe that God in this season is calling us into a new level. When we got a, a, a when, we, when the twins were on the way, we had to upgrade our car to a seven seater. We hadn't bought a seven seater before. It's a whole new level of seating in the car, a whole new level of pricing, a whole new level of vehicle of size. It's a whole new level. And we feel God's calling us into a new level today. In this season where we're all kind of in isolation and stuck at home, we've all been reflecting, we've all been looking inwards at ourselves and thinking about, you know, what is actually really important to us. And, and later down the line, Leah's going to share a message uh, about the new normal, about how things have changed and how we need to change our focus in this season. But right now we've all been questioning uh, what is important and how are things going to be different I believe that transformation is the key for us in this season. That if each of us commit ourselves to being transformed by God, day by day by day, glory to glory to glory, I believe God's got great things in store for us. A fantastic destiny. He's got a plan for us. He's got a vision for your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He has a plan and a purpose for your life, and it is good, and it's not for harm. And so, hey, I want to encourage you, Keep going, 
Keep going, keep going, because day by day by day, you will be transformed if you put your life into God's hand, the ultimate transformer and creator, the one who brings life to all things. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. And we want to preach some newness to you today because there is a new normal coming, a new way of life and a new you because God wants to build you into something better, greater and more glorious and more Christ-like. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you.